Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome, my name is Kellen, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join me for a natural movement workout today. So here's the deal. We're going to begin things pretty easy right now. You're not gonna need a lot of equipment, just your body and a mat and some open space. We're gonna begin with a mobility warm up for two rounds, and then we're going to get into two movement sequences, three movements a piece, and we're gonna go through them three rounds a piece. We'll finish with a short cool down. So this isn't anything super intense, but there's a few things I want you to keep in mind. Uh, from the natural movement perspective, we're always, always promoting mindfulness. And one way that you can really be mindful and present in what you're doing is by focusing on your breathing and make sure that you're breathing deeply and fully during the movements. The next piece I want you to keep in mind is movement quality that we're really trying to develop a higher level of skill behind these movements, control, balance, coordination, precision, all of that good stuff. So slow things down, modify the movements so you can execute them well. We want you to get the most out of these workouts and they're not meant to be beat downs. We're gonna start, like I said, very easy, get you moving a bit, get you exploring some different patterns, and we'll progress later down the line. Again, so happy that you're here to join me, to move a little bit, and all right, without further ado, let's get into the warm-up. So we'll get started with our two-round warm-up sequence, and we're just beginning with some diaphragmatic breathing, getting connected to the breath, oxygenating the body and getting ready for a good movement flow coming up. So what I like to do is lay on my back and place my hands on my abdomen and use that feedback to get in touch with my breath, to deepen my breath. And I'm just staying here for about 10 full breaths or so. As I inhale, feel my stomach expanding into my hands. And as I exhale, feeling that light compression in my midsection almost feeding into that with my hands. Throughout the set, I'll begin to notice my breath lengthening, deepening, and just an overall sense of calm uh, gonna wash over me. And that's something that I want to continually come back to and stay grounded in, especially as the intensity starts to increase. So the next movement we're going into is a rock up to a reach. I'm just starting with these overhead reaches, rocking up to a bent sit position and then reaching overhead, one arm and then the other. And the idea here is to really have a strong intention behind that reach. Now a rock up and a reach forward, leaning from the hips. And whichever direction I'm reaching, I'm really focusing on extending through my arms. I'm trying to access my full range of motion and just push the limits of my uh, mobility here. Next, we'll go into a side sit swivel from my side bent sit position. I'll post my hands back behind my hips and just take my knees side to side. Again, still in active positions, very light, uh, gentle movement, uh, nothing major, but I still want to be very uh, purposeful with this pattern, especially with the internal rotation of the hips, pushing my knee down into the ground and trying to lengthen my spine or sit up as tall as I can with each swivel. Making a transition here to a prone crawl position, hand and knee position, and just working some spinal articulation. Might start with a simple pattern like uh, cat cow, flexing and extending the spine. And you can make any necessary changes or modifications from there. Again, coordinating this movement with the breath and trying to make it as relaxed as possible. We can sometimes add too much effort to some of these movements, but can it be soft and relaxed? And can I get my spine to just become more supple, more responsive? That's just the goal here. Inhaling, exhaling through my round. Now 
making a transition next. Tuck my toes, lift my knees, and going into a crawling two-point balance. Lifting my opposite hand and foot, going from four points of support to two points of support. Just taking a minute to pause and to stabilize. And I want to make sure that my two points of support are extremely strong and stable. My support arm is pressing into the ground in a lockout position. And I'm really pressing down through the ball of the foot. Doing this, performing this movement without a lot of weight shifting. Just focusing on that stability. And then going into a kneeling step up with a forward reach. From a low kneel, step out into my lunge and glide forward into the reach. Trying to keep track of my core here, make sure that I don't overextend into my spine. But this is a great movement for me, is always working to foster better mobility in my ankles and hips. The same with the reach, I'm extending from my body. My intention with the reach is creating the stretch. And I can step out at any angle, I can reach at any angle, and it all offers a unique sensation to help me warm up. So we're gonna come back for round two, added just a little bit of movement here, and back to the diaphragmatic breathing. Again, just about 10 deep breaths or so, getting connected, getting oxygenated. Using my hands as feedback, or I could turn into a prone or face down position and the floor will give me some of that similar feedback as well. Going to my rock up to reach, maybe a little bit more dynamic this time. As I rock back, my core is strong and I'm driving those knees in. My overhead reach, fostering better mobility in my thoracic spine or better mobility at the hips is the case with these forward reaches. Just a few more reps here. Any variations, any pause. Anytime you come across an opportunity to go a little bit deeper into a specific movement, that's your call. Back to those side sit swivels. This time I'm immediately going to the no hands version. Still trying to keep track of creating a good finishing position after each swivel. And I'll also add these little rotation reaches. I love adding spinal twists. So if that feels good for you, feel free to throw that into your warm up here. Note that breathing, exhaling through my reach, inhaling through the transition. However you wanna coordinate, it's just about being mindful of your breath and how you're moving with every variation. Back into that quadruped position in our second round of spinal articulation. And this time I'll start to venture out of that flexion extension pattern and start adding more circular movements. While doing this, I'm thinking about each segment of the spine. I wanna be able to mobilize the neck area, the cervical spine, I wanna have some good mobility in my thoracic spine. And also create a little bit of movement in my lumbar spine. But for the most part, we want to be able to keep that area stable. Back into the crawling two-point balance. Making those transitions a little bit quicker now. We'll see some crawling in this uh, ground flow coming up here. So this is a good opportunity to really feel dialed in on this contralateral pattern and quickly going from a very stable base to a reduced base of support. Just 
sure to keep track of your breathing here. This, this variation is really easy to hold your breath. And then one more round of our kneeling step outs. Step out at any angle, add the reach as it becomes appropriate. Use your imagination here, give yourself some context, really imagine an object that you're trying to reach for and extend your body. The movements are as real as you make them and the more real they become, even if it's just your perception, the more you're going to get out of them. And we're going to make a transition, just a few extra movements as we conclude this warm-up portion. Going back to the cervical spine and just doing some head turns. For me, this is a simple but very important variation for releasing some of the tension that is quick to develop and, um, and, and get stuck in the neck region and the traps. So deep breathing and relaxed movements of the head. Some shoulder rolls next. Again, same idea here, relaxed movement to dissipate some of the tension that will accumulate in these areas. So easy for us to hang on to this tension in our neck and shoulders. Light movement will just release it. And then this kneeling side bend, getting some length through the side body. Coordinate this movement with your breath. And we're just about ready to get into our workout. All right. So our first of two sequences, this is the first round where we're gonna begin with side sit and making a transition into a split kneel. So making these transitions very slowly, mindfully at first. finding strength and stability in each position, moving very purposefully. As I sit, I will take the back leg, sweep it forward, switch my legs, and switch my hips. The hip extension as I rise up to split kneel is a good opportunity to stretch out the hip flexors. And we're just building these pieces of movement, getting comfortable with them because they're going to allow us more options to transition. And as you can see, we just made a transition into prone crawling. Just going about 10 feet forward and 10 feet backward. Keeping my hips and head around the same level and keeping my spine relatively long. I'm not perfectly straight here but my spine is long enough to maintain my ability to turn my head and to see what's going on around me. And from a natural movement perspective, we really value that uh, type of situational awareness. And just make sure that you continue to breathe through this crawling pattern. The heat builds quickly. Go back to seated and then we'll go into a balancing sit position. So our bent sit, but we take the feet off the ground and just doing a few uh, weight shifts here, going from cheek to cheek, glute to glute, and stabilizing in more of a V sit here. Good, strong posture, still breathing. And then we're making it back, round two, Side sit switch in the split kneel, a little bit faster now. Can definitely use your hands to assist with these transitions, but you'll find without the hands will prompt you to create a little bit more strength and stability through your core. Just try to stay present with the movement, stay breathing. 
and execute each transition as cleanly, as smoothly as possible. Prone crawl, forward and backward. Deep breathing, keep the spine long, keep the hips down. And keep your weight evenly distributed on your hands and feet. It's really easy to put a little bit more weight in your feet and take big steps. It's a common inefficiency I see. But slow down and really focus on stepping with the opposite hand and foot. See if you can make the hand and foot touch the ground at about the same time. And of course, that deep breathing. Transition to the balancing sit. Weight shifting, about 10 reps. Try to feel the engagement of the hip flexors. If you extend the legs in this V-sit position, you will really feel those hip flexors working. Draw the shoulders back and try to keep the thoracic spine open. Stay focused. Breathe. Let's get one more round. Adding a hinge, a few hinges to my side sit now. I love that. It's a great way to stretch my hips, stretch my glutes. Take that hinge position, stay low, and I stay a little bit lower through that transition and I feel it helps me work my core a little bit more. Every round is an opportunity to take these same movements but add just little variations, little nuances, little changes in complexity and intensity. Practice, practice, practice opens the door to be more adaptive and more creative with these movements. Simple movements, but you'll continue to learn so much from the repeated practice. Even crawling here, I'm just continuing to go in a forward reverse pattern, but you can branch out into lateral movement. You can play with different variations but really hold yourself to a high standard and focus on how you can execute these movements with greater efficiency each time, especially as the fatigue starts to set in just slightly. Transition back to the balancing sit. Hopefully the core is nice and warm here. Start to shift a little bit more. Challenge your balance a little bit more. Connect into the strength in the middle of your body. Maybe you can hold that V-sit position. more pulses here. Hold it. And relax. Good. I'm going to take a moment for just a little mindful recovery break. Back to some deep breathing. Not a super intense sequence, but there's still an opportunity there to start to build some heat in the body. You'll feel some tension from those various movements. And this is a chance to just recover and to strip away some of that tension which becomes unnecessary. We don't need to hang on to it. We're getting set for sequence number two. Here's the first round. I'm going to try that rock up again. But now instead of the bent sit position, we're rocking up into a crouch position. So the legs are kind of in this figure four and as I rock up onto a half kneel, Just getting the timing down here, making sure to 
execute on both sides. And I love this finishing position here. It's just another great way to develop uh, better hip mobility, start to open those hips. Making a transition next. Seated position with one leg extended and going into a tripod getup. So the opposite hand and foot serve as the base here. And the straight leg is going from straight out in front of us when we're seated to drawing underneath us and stepping out into a wide base. And you can see I'm kind of holding a hand up and that's a little bit more of a defensive application. And if we're thinking about the purpose of self-defense here, that's what makes this wide base make sense. Want to step the leg under, create a wide stance, and make sure that we couldn't be knocked back down to the ground or at an emergency situation. And now from standing, practicing some single leg balance. Take a leg out to the side and then take it back behind me. A lateral balance to a hinge balance. Working to keep my core strong and keep my spine long through these movements. I'm focusing on creating, exploring my range of motion in my free leg, but also really staying rooted and staying strong in the stability of my standing leg. Balance is something that you create with your practice and with your intention and with your focus and with your strength. All too often I hear people talking about balance as a, a fixed trade or something that's inherited. Um, it's, it's something that's cultivated, but it takes time. So if you're having some trouble with balance, if you feel a little wobbly, feel free to change your environment. Use a broomstick or PVC pipe or have a wall nearby or some other fixed object. Allow yourself the opportunity to be successful and train your body to create better balance. Here we go, we're cycling back for round two next. Rock up to crouch. A Little bit more momentum this time, bringing a little bit more intensity. You can see pushing back a little bit more quickly and rounding the spine, using the strength of the core to tuck those knees in. And then creating some momentum with the arms and legs. If you take note, I'm extending my front leg and really grabbing the floor and pulling myself forward. Not only does that give me a more stable base, it also helps me open my hips more completely. Transitioning back to that tripod getup. Hinge position, create the contralateral base of support. Now I'm working my way all the way down to the ground. Really important that you push strong into the floor with those points of support. A lot of core strength here to tuck the leg and lift those hips. This practical skill of getting from the ground up to standing very quickly. It's so practical, so foundational in terms of how we're moving in the world in real world terms, but also gives us a really good conditioning effect. Okay, second round of balance. Really challenging those hips. That lateral balance will help you build some strength in your lateral hips. That is something that I've been deficient in and constantly working on. We get so used to performing movements in the sagittal plane or forward, um, but spending more time in these uh, lateral positions so beneficial for our stability. The carryover for a drill like this for any athletic endeavor is huge.
as I find my forward hinge, I'm really looking to feel the stretch and engagement in the back side of the body, the glutes and the hamstrings. You don't have to keep pace with me per se, especially with this movement. Take your time, quality over quantity. Hold it, focus. And we're gonna bring it back for one more round, almost done today. Rock up the crouch. This time I'm gonna alternate sides on the fly. Again, adding a little bit more intensity by moving faster. Once your body understands the pattern, once it's there, then start to add a little bit more. A little more heat, a little bit more complexity, whatever it may be, but challenge your body to really own these patterns. You can see I start to change orientation a bit, start to rotate around. Any variations that you want to make, this is your chance to explore. Explore movement, explore a practice that's going to work best for you. Tripod get-ups, again, from all the way on the ground, this time alternating sides. Trying to find efficiency and strength in these movements. As I'm getting up from my back, it's almost a, a slight roll to the side. It's like pull my way up to the hand and then perform the tripod. Last round of balance here. Got the heart rate up a little bit. Now really challenging our focus, challenging our stability. Find strength in each end position. You're doing great. We're almost done. Stay focused here. Grip the ground and create your balance. It comes from your effort, your strength. Make sure you keep breathing. Anytime you feel off balance, pause. Check in with that standing leg. Grip the ground. Stabilize before you continue on. Last few reps here. Last hinge. And done. Let's get into a short cool down. Just coming into a forward fold, crossing my arms and just letting gravity assist me in this folded motion, lengthening out the back of the body, tilting my pelvis forward and lifting my hamstrings upward. Gonna root and rise a few times. Just be mindful with this action. Rise up very strong, extend the body. And returning to the ground now, you can find a kneeling, sitting or lying position. And we're just sealing the practice with more deep breathing. You can return to this practice time and time again for more energy, more mobility, and just more play. This is movement nutrition. You can't get too much of it. So it was an honor to share this practice with you today, and we'll see you in future workouts. Take care.